Y'all ready? Hi, uh, my name is Bex Taylor Klaus and I am a trans non-binary actor. I guess the, the main part of my journey in terms of top surgery specifically is that um, I thought that the only way to get um, a breast removal covered by insurance was to be 30 years old and have a family history of breast cancer, um, which I have the second part, but I haven't hit the first part yet. And so my whole family was like planning like, okay, Bex wants top surgery, but we have plenty of time. And then I started doing more research and talking to my therapist, my psychiatrist and other trans people. And I realized that that wasn't my only option. And so then I got to start exploring and it was, scary. <laughs> the, the healthcare system in America is scary to navigate alone, especially like as a trans young adult who wants to do all their health stuff alone. That's unfeasible. For all, all you trans, trans kids, kids out there who want to do it alone, don't. I know that there's some sick twisted need to do it alone that we all have, but it won't help us in the long run. The only thing that actually helped me and, and brought me to Dr. Richardson was reaching out to my family and, and kind of backtracking and going, it didn't work doing this alone, I need some help. I am a lucky, very privileged person and I, am, I was lucky enough to have an incredible support system and I know that there are a lot of kids out there like me who do not have that and are not nearly as privileged as I've been. The place that I would start is with the Trevor Project. The Trevor Project actually has really good resources for all kinds of different things for trans kids, including um, uh, helplines. I would call the Trevor Project and ask for help and ask for recommendations. It depends on which city you're in. But there are ways to find, um, not exactly trans support groups, but a trans community. I ended up finding mine, or I started finding mine by going to Trans Pride in Los Angeles uh, a couple years ago. And um, so the Los Angeles LGBT Center um, probably has a lot of really, really good, uh, uh, What's the word? Uh, resources. Thank you. Resources. <laughs> and um, I'm sure that wherever you are, kids out there, trans kids out there, wherever you are, look in your city. And if your city doesn't have one, reach out to me on social media and we'll see what we can find. Because Google is out there, but Google is also a lot of content to sift through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tweet me or, or, or message me on a photo on Instagram and, and we'll see what we can come up with. If someone out there knows of an amazing support group in their town that maybe they think is underutilized, underappreciated, maybe message with you and maybe you could start a database. I would love that. I would love to start. I'd love it. Thank you for that. Message me. I'll start a Google spreadsheet and I'll share it and everyone will be able to add what they find yeah. and like I'll even put a little thing for like comments and notes for like yeah. if you've been to this place you can comment on if it was a good resource or it, what they would need to work on or what you would need to expect walking into it. Max's mm -hmm. list, like Angie's list. Yeah. The trans <laughs> I like that a lot. That's a great idea. And uh, oh, tran Trangie's list. <laughs> I can say that. Trangie's list. <laughs> I think that's awesome. So when, when you did go to other offices, what were some of the things that kind of made you bristle that made you realize it wasn't right, maybe red flags other, other trans kids should, should hear about? Um, well, first of all, several of the other doctors were great doctors and, and doctors, you know, it would have been really nice to work with as well, but I'm very picky. <laughs> um, and so I went into every office and asked um, what they thought of what they what they would be working with and what I was specifically looking for and a lot of doctors were just like well I could do this I've done it like this I could do this it's fine and I don't want someone who says it's fine I want someone who says here are your options here's what I recommend what do you want mm -hmm. let's see mm -hmm. how we can make that all come together in one 
one pot. And one thing that I loved about working with you is like we talked about it and, and you told me what you were a big part of it. You were kind of steering the ship. I mean, I of course was going to keep it safe, yeah. <laughs> keep it healthy, keep it beautiful, keep it safe, but this was all you. What were some of the things that you felt really strongly about? Um, I felt really strongly about, I wanted to keep my nipple size, mm -hmm. which all the other doctors that I talked to really heavily were like trying to get me to do a graft and to, to change the shape and to change the location. Mm -hmm. I, I even suggested it. I said, well, yeah. ordinarily we would do this and... But what felt yeah. different about that is you were like, ordinarily, but we can do yeah. these, this or sure. this. Sure. And I didn't really feel that openness from every other surgeon I went to. There were a few, and, and that's why I kept like courting those ones. But yeah, that was really the biggest difference for me was feeling like I had someone who listened to me and gave me options. I think that it's it's easy in some situations, you know, like if if someone has say, you know, appendicitis and someone comes in and says, well, what we re recommend is to make a tiny incision and go in with a camera and some long instruments and do a laparoscopic surgery and remove your appendix. If someone says, well, really, I'd really rather have you cut me like from here to here, make a huge incision and just scoop it out with your paws. <laughs> it's like in that situation, you could say, oh, trust me, that's not what you really want. Yeah. But I think that a lot of doctors in a lot of situations, no worries. I think that a lot of doctors in a lot of situations will take aesthetic choices away from people to say, no, that's no, like I hear from women all the time that went to get implants, for instance, and they, they woke up with these huge fun bags that they were like, I did not ask for this. And the doctor just put it upon themselves so like, no, you trust me, trust me, this is what you really want. And they're like, no, this isn't yeah. what I really want. And this I kind of idea that, that um, younger patients, female patients, patients of color, that sometimes choices are taken away from them. And like, no, trust me, we know better. You know, the patriarchy, patriarchy yeah. the medical community. And trans people are especially vulnerable, trans right. women, trans men, right. either way, if you, if in other doctor's offices, sometimes when you say you're trans, it puts them on edge. Mm -hmm. The training is just starting to happen mm -hmm. in how to interact with trans patients and take medical histories for trans patients. And, and at my sister's working on getting into medical school and has friends and so can talk to me about how the training is changing and what their friends are going through. Oh, we got none, nothing, nothing. There was never a mention of of, of anything really like that. And that's it's not... what puts the older, yeah. the older docs on edge of like, yeah. I don't know how to deal with this. Like, uh, you know, they, it's, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And then there was another, the, the surgeon that I was originally going to work with, mm -hmm. um, kind of, this was while I was doing this all on my own and before I kind of had a better picture of what I, what I needed in terms of a surgeon to work mm -hmm. with rather than work, like, uh, be operated upon. Mm -hmm. And it was a doctor that basically said, I've done hundreds of these. This is just another thing. I can make it look good. And then wouldn't show me any pictures, pictures? of success. Mm -hmm. And I ended up finding online, um, like only a few weeks before my surgery date, a really, really horrendous review, like had put the scar up here and the nipple below the scar. Oh, no. And this, this poor trans guy had to go and get an entirely new second surgery. Oh, no. And I was terrified. As soon as I figured out that that first doctor who had done that was the doctor who did mine, I freaked out, I called, and I was like... Was that the point at which you were like, damn? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I can't do this. I, yeah. I, I had a friend do extra research and found the exact same stuff and a few other like bad reports that had been like tried to be purged from the internet and I freaked out. I was like, well, uh, doing this alone is a bad idea. It's, it's so difficult because you don't, you can only do it once. It's yeah. not hair, it's not gonna grow back. Yeah. Um, now, you know, people that are MTF that might be wanting to change their gender to a feminine gender, well, that's a little something. You can work with that. You can put in implants, you can do fat grafting, you can revise and, and you can kind of tweak and, and you can do it again. And, and, but, but your this situation is a, little, is a little different. And we've learned that like you, you, you can get it done again, it's just 
very expensive and very painful and, and it's hard on the psyche. Well, or you just do it right the first time. It's the one and only yeah, you know, that's exactly that. what it was. I was like, and that was my thought process was, yeah. I could just go to this guy and run the risk of getting botched and do it again, but I don't want to. Yeah. I want it right the first time. I want to find the right person and have what I want.